package managers make installing software on Linux incredibly easy. Whether it's running a command in your terminal with something like Pac-Man or app depending on your distro, or using one of the various GUIs out there, you run one command or click one button and suddenly you have a new program. At least that's the case when it's working well. I'm sure you tried to install some random application before and you've been prompted with a message saying something like, X package conflicts with Y package or installing X package requires you to downgrade Y package. And depending on your package manager, sometimes you can just ignore that warning and proceed with the installation. And sometimes that could be fine. Other times there would be an actual conflict there. Let's say the binaries have the same name, their install location is the same, their configure location is the same, and it leads to more problems than you would otherwise like to see. So the way that most distros handle it, the way that Arch handles it, is if you get that warning, you have the option of installing the new package and getting rid of the old one, or not installing anything. And that's totally fine when there is an actual package conflict. Please protect me from my stupidity so I don't ruin my system. But this is a PSA to every package maintainer out there, whether it's for the standard repos in your distro or for a third party repo like say the AUR. If there is not an actual conflict, please stop making packages conflict. It's not a problem that I or anyone else is going to run into every single day. But considering how many programs I install, I run into it enough where it really, really is starting to annoy me. So then, when should packages actually be conflicting? Well, the most easily identifiable situation is when you have multiple packages that all provide the exact same application, and for whatever reason, the applications also overlap. So let's say the configs are located in the same location, or you need to have the binary in the same location, or anything like that. One of those situations is with OBS. So in the main repos, there is OBS Studio, but on the AUR, there is OBS Linux Browser, there is OBS Studio Titan 652, there is OBS VST, and there's a bunch of other ones. And all of these are going to pull configs from the same location. So to make sure that things don't get really weird and you don't have plugins that are conflicting with each other or anything like that, in the Titan 652 package, all of those versions are listed as conflicting. But this conflict shouldn't be here unless it needs to be done. If you can deal with the conflict before the packaging stage, that is a better spot to be in. So let's say when you compile the application, you can compile in a different config location and that would remove the conflict. That would be an improvement. Or if they would have conflicting binary names, you can change the binary name. All of this is important to deal with to make sure that when you upgrade the application or you uninstall the application, the package manager knows exactly what files can be removed, what files can be upgraded, without modifying the other program. But not all conflicts are caused by the same application. Sometimes devs don't know that other devs exist, and if you give your program a fairly generic name, there might be other programs that already are using that name. Generally, this can be fixed with the same pre-intervention methods as before, but sometimes you'll have, say, a hard-coded config location, or a hard-coded data location, or something like that, which is a bit harder to address. So you either make the packages conflict, or you have a fork of the project in your repos. Now, it's probably preferable to do the second. Make sure the application doesn't conflict in any way, and then have it in the repos working like it should be. But if you have a maintainer that doesn't want to manage that fork, then having them conflict is probably fine. Now, sometimes when a project updates to a new version, the package doesn't just update, a second package is created. For example, with something like Python. Python 2 and Python 3 are two separate packages on 99% of distros. I don't want to say it's the case on every single one, but most distros, it is going to be like that because there are massive breaking changes between these two projects, and if you are forcing everything to upgrade, it just wouldn't work. I know that's the case for Fuse 2 and Fuse 3 as well, and a bunch of other projects. Now, packages like this shouldn't be conflicting unless there is some like fundamental reason why they have to conflict. If they can both be installed at the same time, they should be allowed to be both installed at the same time. But sometimes you have a new package created for a new version, not because there is some sort of massive breaking change and you need to have a new package, but just because someone made a new package. 
Or maybe your distro has multiple standard repos. For example, on Arch, we have community, we have extra, we have multi-lib, and let's say that package is being moved from one repo into another. So this new package is a drop and replacement in every conceivable way. There is no functional reason why you would ever want to have them both installed at the same time. In this case, making them conflict is totally fine. Finally, some other sort of technical reason why you either can't or probably shouldn't have both these applications installed at the same time. Let's say, for example, with your bootloader or a net system. I personally cannot think of a single situation where you'd ever want to have Grub and System Deboot installed together. If there is one, maybe that's a bad example, but there are cases where you just do not want to have two of these applications installed together. While you could technically make the same argument about window managers and desktop environments, I think it's a little bit different because in many situations, you will want to switch between them and having to uninstall and reinstall them, that would be a massive pain. But swapping between bootloaders and swapping between init systems isn't something that most people do. So making it slightly less convenient for the handful of people who want to do that to protect the people who might make some really dumb mistake, I think is also fine. So when should packages not be conflicting? Well, a great situation is when there is literally no reason for them to be conflicting. One great example of this is with Audacium and Tenacity. Both of these are forks of Audacity. So you might think that, hey, maybe they should conflict with Audacity. Maybe they should conflict with each other. And that's what's being done in the Audacium package. This is really dumb and shouldn't be like this. Because if we go over to the Tenacity side, there's no conflict here. And there shouldn't be a conflict because if you manually install Audacium, there are no problems whatsoever. They use different config locations. Everything about them is different and it's fine. It's totally fine. Sure, most people won't want to install them at the same time, but if they don't need to be conflicting because there's nothing that's conflicting between them, there's nothing that might cause problems down the line, don't just add a conflict just for the sake of adding a conflict. Everyone on Linux wants package managers to be good, but regardless of how good the application itself is, if the packages don't have good packaging standards, it really doesn't matter. So to all of the devs out there who are thinking of making packages conflict with each other that don't need to conflict, please stop doing that. Just only have conflicts in places where they need to exist. But maybe you think I'm wrong, in which case, let me know down below. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scrab Sterling Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I just knocked that drink. I'm out.